A review of the recent temperature history dating back 100 years or more is not necessarily supportive of the notion that human-caused carbon dioxide increases are the primary driver of temperature changes over the last century. Before we take a look at temperatures, we need to understand when the CO2 increases occurred. This is a chart of human CO2 emissions dating back to the year 1751, and we see that no significant emissions began until the mid-20th century, during the post-World War II economic boom. If CO2-driven temperatures were to have a significant impact on temperatures, then it would be in this post-World War II period when it should have occurred. This is the most widely used and recognized chart of surface temperatures, and it begins in 1850. Looking at just the 20th century and early 21st century, we see temperatures have generally been rising, but it's in fits and starts. Because of the ramping up of CO2 and emission from 1945 on, we'll concentrate in this video on that time period. And we find that for nearly 70% of that time, temperatures were either decreasing or stable. If CO2 increases were driving warming, shouldn't those numbers be flipped? with at least 70% of the time being in a warming trend. The period from 1944 to 1979 are particularly enlightening. This was a 33-year period of falling temperatures, yet carbon dioxide was being added to the atmosphere in earnest. There was enough of a decline that many in the academic community were seriously considering the possibility of us entering into the next ice age. The most recent CO2 temperature quandary is a period of at least 18 years of flat temperatures. This has been called the pause. In fact, in their latest report, the IPCC agreed that there had been no statistically significant increase in global surface temperature from 1998 to 2012. So what has occurred temperature-wise since 2014? The years 2015 and 2016 saw a significant spike of rising temperatures. Most observers attribute the spike not to global warming, but rather to a warm ocean phase of the Pacific known as the El Nino, and it was one of the largest on record. Since that warm spike, temperatures have fallen dramatically. Back to the numbers of the inconvenient pause. So what can we expect as we look forward into the next several decades or even a century in terms of temperature? If you're asking me, the answer is I don't know. We can look over the last 10,000 years of climate history and see that there were several other warming periods very similar to the one we're in right now, all of which ended with higher temperatures than we have today. Other scientists that I respect closely link solar activity to temperature that we've seen over the last several centuries, and they are predicting a significant cooling event coming up in just a few years. Those confidently predicting a significant rise in temperature due to our increased CO2 couldn't have predicted the 33-year decrease in temperatures in the mid-20th century, and they sure as heck didn't predict the now 23-year period of stable temperatures that we're seeing today. If they couldn't predict these, why should we believe what they're telling us now? 